my nemesis, my white whale, the Ganon to my link, the creep to my radiohead just wanting to play new songs instead of being asked to play old stuff all the time. I speak, of course, of Call of Duty Warzone. An innocent enough title, you might think, but somehow this game has been the bane of my budget gaming life in 2021. Gather round, children, as I tell you the story of... Let me set the scene with a little bit of recent history. There's timestamps if you want to skip, but bear with me. When I started the Tales from the Scalper Pandemic series, my concept was to test graphics cards that might still be relatively affordable during this tech crisis on a fairly average PC. To that end, I built this, the RPG PC, or reasonably priced gaming PC, spec'd out to what I imagined most gamers in 2021 would have access to. A hyper-threaded quad-core, 8 gigs of RAM, and a small SSD and larger hard drive combo is, in my opinion, the ideal gaming rig for someone on a budget. That's not to say it's an ideal gaming PC. This system has what some call bottlenecks, that is, certain aspects of the system are going to limit the performance of the graphics card. This first became evident when I benchmarked Valorant. Literally every card from the R9 270X up to the RTX 3060 Ti returned roughly the same FPS, as Valorant churns out more frames from these GPUs than the CPU can keep up with. One game that has given me more trouble than most, particularly in the last couple of months, is the aforementioned Warzone. With issues varying in severity from textures failing to load, to half second long pauses in gameplay, to crashing to desktop, I've searched for a lasting solution. The biggest recurring issue has been related to the Windows page file, which, for those who don't know, is an area of drive space allocated by Windows to use in lieu of RAM for particularly memory intensive applications. Although Warzone's system requirements suggest it only needs 8 gigs of RAM, it seems to rely on the page file a lot. When my own page file mysteriously reset from the SSD where I usually have it to the hard drive, that's when gameplay started stuttering and freezing. After creating a fixed size page file on the SSD, the stuttering went away, but before long the file somehow became corrupted and caused the game to crash to desktop every time I landed in Verdansk. Deleting the errant page file and making a new one resolved the crashing issue, but this didn't feel like a complete lasting fix to me, and I remained concerned that it might happen again. Meanwhile, I'd looked at the Steam hardware survey results for the first time in quite a while and saw that the RPG PC matched those specs pretty closely, save for one, the RAM amount. It seems my estimate of what the average gamer had access to was short by about 8 gigabytes, so I decided it was time to do my first upgrade to the reasonably priced gaming PC and swap the two 4 gig sticks out for a pair of 8 gigs. Around the same time I came to this decision, I had a comment that made me rethink it. The commenter, rather confidently, told me that my frame rates from the R9 270X were being held back by the 8 gigs of RAM in the system, particularly in Warzone and Horizon Zero Dawn. For some reason, despite the fact that I had come to the same conclusion about Warzone, my first instinct was that this person was wrong about Horizon. Suddenly the idea that 16 gigs should be the minimum requirement in 2021 seemed absurd. And if that was true of a AAA game like Horizon, shouldn't it also be true of Warzone? Conflicted, and also quite determined to be right, I decided the best course of action was to actually test it out. So, uh, for those who skipped ahead, welcome back. Today I'm going to test whether 8 gigs of RAM is still sufficient in 2021, or if upgrading to 16 gigs could actually improve your FPS. I'll be testing using a Ryzen 3 3100 CPU and an AMD R9 270 GPU, with an overclock bringing the card as close as I can get to a 270X without flashing the BIOS. Also, because I'll be testing a few different configurations, I'll only be testing four games. Warzone, Fortnite, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Cyberpunk 2077. 
Starting off with the game that prompted this whole video, Horizon Zero Dawn runs at a decidedly OK 27fps average with 8 gigs of RAM, and adding an extra 8 gigs only sees that rise by 2fps to 29, a respectable enough increase as a percentage, but not the most compelling reason to upgrade. No, that comes from the improved frame pacing. Running through Mother's Heart, that sounds wrong, running through Crows in the settlement of Mother's Heart, 1% lows dip into single digits with 8 gigs of RAM, whereas upgrading to 16 gigs sees frames consistently sticking to the 20s, dropping only as low as about 21. 0.1% lows remain abysmal, though that's probably down to us running below the recommended amount of VRAM. Using my standard 8GB kit of RAM, Fortnite scored an average of 89fps and 1% lows of 59. Switching out the 8GB kit for 16 gigs had little to no obvious effect on the game's performance. Averages dropped slightly to 87, though that's close enough to be simply attributed to run-to-run -run variances. 1% lows climbed to 62, again a margin of error level difference. There was, however, a noticeable increase in 0.1% lows, climbing from less than 40 FPS with 8 gigs to over 50 FPS with 16. These micro drops in frame rate will manifest as very occasional micro stutters. If you're serious about your Fortnite, then 16 gigs should be a no-brainer, but I think the average player needn't worry themselves about upgrading to 16 gigs just yet. I thought I'd include Cyberpunk 2077 because, well, the R9 270 isn't even scratching the minimum required spec and frankly needs all the help it can get. After switching the RAM out, averages climbed from 25 to 27. Sure, that's only a 2 FPS boost, but in this case that's almost a 10% increase. 1% lows benefit even more, increasing from almost 7 FPS to just over 12. In both cases, 0.1% lows were a rather disastrous 2 FPS, so unfortunately, even downloading more RAM can't make Cyberpunk work well on this setup. Here we go. Having fixed the page file issues, dropped quality settings as low as they would go, and used the resolution scaler to get as close to 1280 by 720 as possible, Warzone ran okay. With 8 gigs installed, I saw 52 FPS averages and 1% lows of 35. Doubling up to 16 gigs saw no improvement to averages or 1% lows, however there was a pretty noticeable increase in 0.1% lows, essentially doubling from 8 to 16. Neither represents an optimal experience, and kind of makes me wonder exactly what it would take to get a genuinely smooth experience here. With Afterburner set up to better display memory allocation, I can see that the game draws a total of about 16 gigs in either memory configuration. Only about half of the physical RAM is being used, however, with the rest being pulled presumably from the page file. As mentioned before, the PC is set up to draw virtual memory from the SSD. When it had accidentally been reallocated to the rather pathetic 1TB hard drive, that's when my troubles began. So I asked myself, how much of an effect does this one simple change make to games? Before I start, if you have an SSD and HDD combo and want to check on your own Windows page file, it's a matter of right-clicking on your Windows icon on the taskbar, clicking System, then Advanced System Settings. The new window that opens up should default to the Advanced tab from where you click the Settings button within the Performance box. Another new window opens from which you need to select the Advanced tab and click Change in the Virtual Memory box. Uncheck the box marked Automatically Manage Paging File Size for All Drives, choose System Manage Size on your SSD, in my case Drive C, and select No Paging File on your hard drive, in my case Drive D. Horizon runs about the same with 16 gigs of RAM and a hard drive page file as it does with 8 gigs of RAM and an SSD. With 8 gigs of RAM and a hard drive, however, you're in for a world of hurt. Moving through crowds of people occurred essentially in slow motion. Averages dropped dramatically, and 1% and 0.1% lows were both below 1 FPS. A second run, having allowed the buffers to finally fill themselves up, 
was much more acceptable and actually saw better averages than even the 16 gig setup, but I don't think that speaks to the overall experience. Switching the page file to the hard drive didn't seem to do too much damage to Fortnite. Don't get me wrong, it's a worse experience, and if you have an SSD you should definitely be using it for your virtual memory allocation, but the biggest benefits only come if you have 16 gigs of RAM, and even then it really only helps increase your 0.1% lows. Cyberpunk probably suffered the least of all the games tested, its performance sucked with the SSD page file and it sucks just as much with the hard drive page file. Regardless, it can't really be called a good experience. As a warning, some may find the following scenes upsetting. Yes, this is real gameplay from Call of Duty Warzone with an 8GB setup with the page file allocated to the hard drive. 1% lows are in the single digits. The overall average drops by about 6fps just from the sheer number of dropped frames. Gameplay is next to impossible. Conversely, the 16GB configuration is fine. It comes in roughly the same score as with the SSD. Though, once more, the 0.1% lows are basically intolerable. So, <clears throat> I was wrong. 8GB of RAM is only acceptable as a bare minimum in 2021, and then only if you have an SSD in your system to allocate your page file to. While having a fast virtual memory pool can make up for a lot of the performance deficit of not having more physical memory, it looks like having a slow page file can actually harm performance, in some cases quite dramatically. Out of curiosity, I also did a run through of each game with 16 gigs of RAM install but no page file at all, and as it turns out there was no real discernible benefit to doing that, and Warzone started crashing to desktop again, so clearly there isn't a downside to using virtual memory from an SSD. I'm worried I might have opened up a can of worms for myself here, as now I'm tempted to see how running games from an SSD compares to running them from a hard drive, and I can see that swallowing up a few days of my life, most of which will be spent downloading games. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>